it says recording pending. There we go. Hi, Albus. I uh, just wanted to ask you or let you know that we're going to be recording uh, this interview. Is that OK? Yep, it's great. OK, OK, great. Here we go then. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're here with Albus Brooks today. He's going to spend some time with us. Um, Albus is the vice president of business development and strategy at Millinder White. He's also on the board of MSU and he's a member of JEDI, which is Justice, Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. He is also a fellow uh, for the Marshall Memorial Fellowship. So he wears a lot of hats and uh, I know uh, Albus, uh, thank you for being here. And I know you're involved with a lot of initiatives and wear a lot of hats. So tell us about yourself and how you became involved with uh, the construction and urban planning. Yeah, so uh, first of all, uh, thanks for having me, uh, John and Derek. Really appreciate you guys uh, doing this. I think it's really important and I think it's going to be incredibly beneficial um, to the industry. So uh, first off, yes, I um, was born and raised in uh, Southern California, actually moved out to Colorado by way of University of Colorado. Um, Play football there, got my education there, and um, unfortunately was not able to move on and play in the NFL like I always wanted to as a kid, but um, ran into my passion, uh, which was uh, community development, working with young people in uh, Northeast Denver and far Northeast, um, and got super excited about that and education and connecting those young people who had been cut off from um, our society and, and the success in our society and, and giving them opportunities. Um, so worked uh, several nonprofits doing that for a long time and then um, got excited about running for city council and became the, uh, the you know, Denver city council president and served for about uh, eight years. And um, at during that time, that was the real boom in Denver um, when we just saw a lot of construction opportunities and, and, and my district, um, and it was the epicenter of all of that. And I think that's when I really started getting excited about what it means to plan a city. What does it mean to develop a city? What does it mean to have inclusive opportunities for all? Um, and that's that eight year experience, I think, has allowed me to to be a part of now Millinder White, which we do all of that work in Southern California and all over Colorado. Um, and as a trustee of MSU, uh, connecting um, uh, folks, uh, women, uh, minorities into opportunities in Denver. And so it's it's uh, an incredible opportunity and I love it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I've got a question for you and, and I want to follow up on on your uh, MSU involvement because I know they, they have a. a, a a construction management area that they're really, really uh, being very aggressive in, in in trying to promote. What what can we do at the city to help partner with our educational institutions? Because as you know, there's a tremendous infusion of, of construction investment in this area, and we want to make sure everyone has the opportunity to to get connected to those those jobs. So, give us your advice. I, I think it's it's actually rather easy. I mean, the city is um, it has so many projects, so much uh, infusion of public money that it can require certain participation from um, minority students, students from the community, um, and so it, it can have a workforce component to all of these programs and. Uh, when I was in city council, we we actually made those local hired, local preference. Um, we wrote those into contracts and things like that. And so I think that's one way uh, to really get going. I think the other way is training. Um, you know, the workforce now, the, the the all of the opportunities, having those trainings set up to National Western, set up to um, you know, some of the larger infrastructure, the bond, the billion dollar bond that we've had, those are, it's a lot of money going through the city and we should direct it into a way that we know um, reaches, um, you know, everyone in the city, especially those who've been overlooked. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I, I, I want to uh, get a little more targeted with the question, and, and, and I, I want to talk about small and more minority businesses getting a piece of this pie, because I, I know that's been a, a huge question and, and, quite honestly, a struggle to, to try to fulfill some of those obligations. Uh, can you tell us a, a little about your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, we are a nationally large minority owned business at Millinder White. And so making sure that we are focusing and, and this is what it's going to take, right? Um, and entering into mentor protege programs for smaller minority owned businesses um, to help them to grow, to partner with them on projects, to give them opportunities to grow is really important from a private sector perspective. Mm -hmm. And I hope other large companies that are doing well right now do the same thing. So that's a private sector perspective. I think from a public sector perspective, we have this federal program. Um, we know that minority women-owned businesses are not as utilized as they need to be. And I think we need to continue to push the, the envelope. I, I think we need to help graduate folks who've been in the um, program for a long time. And I think we need to um, make sure that we're getting new folks and helping them to build capacity uh, to grow. And that's the big thing that I learned is that it's really hard and onerous to even go through the process to get certified. Um, and so to get that pipeline much larger from minority women owned businesses, we need to be in the community really helping folks uh, to build capacity to understand the nuances of all the regulations and all the issues that it takes to get certified. So I think um, that is some of the work um, that I'd be doing. Um, I, you know, I think you guys are already doing it, but I think um, those are some of the issues that I see. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I want to drill down even more narrow to, to talk about the individual. Because, I mean, we, we start from that big picture perspective of this is the city, these are the companies, but these are real people we're, we're talking about. And, and so what advice can you give individuals that, that are interested in, in pursuing careers in construction? What, what, what kind of uh, wisdom would you share with them? I'm so excited. Right. Like I think I knew this and I was a part of it, but now that I am hiring, um, I'm going after, I'm trying to provide opportunities uh, for our company in the community. I'm like, it's incredible. If you love construction and you, this is a career that you want to grow in, you can build wealth, <laughs> you know? And I just want to tell folks that you can build wealth. We are hiring entry level uh, folks at 65 to $70,000 a year at a management position. Mm. If you're not ready for that, you can go, we have a trades route where you can go be, be a carpenter. You can work your way up to be a foreman. Now and then you can switch over and be a superintendent and, you know, uh, area superintendent. Mm -hmm. And those are well paid positions, right? And so I guess I get fired up about it. I think there has been a misconception in our society that construction is um you know more of a blue collar low low wage deal and that is not the case i'm just telling you right now it's not just millinder white there are all these large companies and i will tell you this um a lot of folks and i was fearful too during the you know pandemic and i know you're going to ask a question about that um and it was touch and go for about four or five months but now <laughs> let me just tell you there's enough work out there for everybody, right? Um, there's so much going on. Denver, especially in the Denver metro area throughout Colorado, people relocated here. We were the top five cities that people relocated during the pandemic. Um, I, I just saw a report. Um, Denver has is now this place that a lot of capital is starting to park for development projects. 
um, which just means more opportunities. The Biden administration is going to pass a very large infrastructure bill, um, the largest in American history, uh, that will transform the construction construction industry. So I guess I say to you, now is the time. What are you waiting for? Let's get trained. Let's get you to work so you can be a part of this boom. Okay, great. Wonderful. Great advice. Great advice. And, you know, it, 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 it reminds me kind of when I first started working, you know, you get your paycheck, man, you get more money than you've ever seen. You're like, oh my goodness, I got a thousand dollar check. So how many sneakers can I buy? What kind of, you know, what can I do with this money? What advice can you can you give to those kids? Because I know you get excited about this piece, too, is building wealth, financial management, financial planning. Uh, can, can you talk a little about that as well? Because I, I know your passion in that area. Uh, as well. I'd just like to say, you know, I think uh, in in our history in this country, um, I think through federal laws and racism and all this kind of stuff, we have done so much to um, take wealth away from the black and brown community. And I'm really about building wealth in the black and brown community now. Like that is, I think it's it's the legacy I want to be a part of. It's, oh, so it's incredibly important. And I think <laughs> when we talk about building wealth, it's not buying things. <laughs> right, right. I had to learn that. Yeah. That's the lesson I had to learn. So, um, you know, you know, I think the first thing it's about, you know, saving. It's about investing, uh, investing in yourself, investing in uh, other ways to get more passive income. You know, there it's, you know, when you have money, you don't want to spend it. Uh, you want to invest it and you want to save it and you want to provide other opportunities. And so I think um, that is the advice that that I would give. And then when you get into more specific issues, it's it's about, you know, matching your 401k to the top ability that your employer will do. Um, it's about making sure that that you're saving for those vacations and things that you that you want to do. It's about saying no to yourself. It's about making sure you're on a budget. I'm on a weekly budget, right? Like, don't just think that you got all this money, like make sure that um, you have an emergency fund. So all of those things, financial management is so important. And I gotta say, everyone needs to take a class on financial management. Um, you know, my wife and I brush up on it uh, probably once a year just to say, man, where are some ways that we can just be sharpening Ourself and there's a financial management and literacy. I know you guys run it out of uh, uh, Adido, and so I just think um, I would really encourage folks who are listening and trying to figure out maybe they're making a little bit more money, like what to do with it to make sure they're going through that financial liter literacy classes and management. Great, great. Um, I, you know. I really hate to bring this up because it, it's been such a part of our lives for so long now, COVID-19. Yeah. And, and I, you know, what's our new reality? I don't, I don't think we even know that yet, but, but how has COVID-19 impacted the work that you're doing? Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm a gregarious, uh, kinetic, um, you know, in your face, want to connect type of learner in person. So I really hate this. I hate that I got to see y'all, you know, through this screen. And so I cannot wait. I got my two shots, you know, I'm, I can't wait for the in-person stuff. Right. And so, um, it is damaged. It has damaged us, um, uh, severely. And, and there are mental health challenges that we won't know for years to come, um, for individuals. And so I hate, to see that. That being said, you know, um, my dad used to always say, you know, any any crisis is um, opens up many more opportunities, right? And so I also think that a lot of opportunities have opened up. And in the construction industry, con construction is about to, I, I've said this before, if it was here, it's about to be here, you know, with everything coming together with more capital let's just say in the denver metro area investors uh, opportunity uh, all that's coming public money 
all that's coming right and so when when you get private and public money coming together i mean that's that's the special sauce that you look for in uh an economic environment and i guess that's what i feel like is going to happen um i don't believe that the staying at home and working from home deal uh folks have gotten used to it and i think a lot of folks like it i think if you're running a company in an organization i need you at, it depends on what you do but i need you here right i i, I need to build that culture um, for your own mental health as a person, I think you need to get out and connect with people. Um, and so I think through this summer, folks will start being back in the office. You're already seeing a big push for that. We're in the office, have been in the office for a while. But, you know, as people start going back and people start traveling, we're not in a static environment anymore. And competition is happening again. And so it's going to be real interesting to see what businesses do. Right. They're like, wait a second, I can't I just can't have you at home. I, I'm fighting against this business. They're all back. Folks are flying. They're keeping people safe. No one's getting sick. So I'm going to have to have some new standards. And I think people there are a certain section of our society who's like, hey, listen, I'm not going back until I want to go back. But there's going to be a rub, I think, with management at some point. Um, so I think everybody's dealing with that right yeah. now. Like, yeah. No one knows what it's going to look like. I I tend to believe that um, by by early fall we'll all be back and it'll be you know moving and shaking again. But I think the next three months will be a lot of friction for companies and organizations to figure out the right balance. The other thing I think is that you know we, there's so much pent up demand in the economy. It's just ready to kind of kind of explode right like and you see it already i mean today uh retail went up 10 percent um <laughs> just because you start to see states and cities open up stuff yesterday the mayor said our, the mass mandate uh is over for outside in the city of denver that 100 percent occupancy can happen in restaurants so folks and i was just I was just on a patio yesterday at a restaurant and people were just high fiving. They're touching each other. I'm just saying like it's happening. Right. And yeah. and you like to see that energy. Yeah. Yeah. How do you see that from an MSU lens, all of that and, you know, how it affects the education and the construction industry? Yeah, well, you know, I, I would say, you know. Universities have been devastated by this devastated. Um, and as a trustee, I get a chance to see the numbers and it's really hard. What I am grateful for is um, a relief packages um, that the president and others have signed that will go to universities. I am excited that MSU and the Rara campus of uh, CU Denver and CCD have gone into a joint agreement and said, hey, we're all coming back. So that is really exciting. I think these kids these young students want to come back and get get with it. I think uh, it's only great opportunity for those in the construction management program. And by the way, there's over 300 students in the uh, MSU construction management program, which is excellent. I I encourage every construction organization to go and recruit there. We just hired. Uh, some interns and we pay our interns full time. I encourage construction organizations to pay all their interns. Uh, it's a great opportunity. You make good money too, by the way, uh, and be a student. And so I think, John, that um, I'm very optimistic. And uh, I think the construction industry is actually looking for more diverse pools um, to recruit in. And MSU is a perfect, perfect match for that. You know, I, I did have, you know, a couple of other questions that, you know, Albus, I've followed your your career since, you know, those CU days. Uh, and I know, you know, those were the good old days, though. Uh, when we were to, good, when we were yeah, good. I know. We were winning. We had some championships, you know. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. You know, um, one of the things you talked about was was this infusion of investment this 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 
New Deal, so to speak. It's, it's, and, and so New Deal needs new leadership. And, and I know you're very visionary in that, in that way. Can you talk about your thoughts about new leadership as, as we evolve through this, this pandemic? I mean, I can talk all day about this. Are you talking about in a specific context at the city, at the state, at the, or just? Yeah, I would say at the city. Let's, let's, okay. just, let's just focus on the city. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think, um, you know, with new crises, right, uh, it brings up new leadership. And I think, uh, you know, the city is at an inflection point where, you know, we just went through one of the worst crisis we've ever seen in the city of Denver. Lost a ton of money. Now, grateful that that $1.9 trillion relief package will be coming to the city. Um, so you all don't have to take any more furlough days, right? So <laughs> none of those issues. But we're coming to the end of, a, of an error, of a Hancock era, right? We're going to have a new mayor. We're going to have six or seven new council members. We're going to have all kinds of different opportunities for new leadership in the city of Denver. Um, and I, for one, think that it's a leadership that can really bring several interests together, can bring, um, you know, entities that have been strange bedfellows before together for a unified vision and focus. Um, and I'm excited about that. I mean, Denver is a weird, weird place because, you know, there's so much opportunities, but everyone's in their corners, right? It's a very collaborative city, you know, in some levels, but there's, it's very divided in separate cities, city as well. And um, I think the next, next level of leadership is going to be someone who's a uniter and really brings folks together. Uh, for a unified vision to to really take Denver to the next level. And so, and that's in the private sector, that's the mayor, you know, that's all the different levels of the city. Um, and, and that's because of this crisis. I think someone somewhere is going to be our next leader and leaders, and they're getting inspired. They're, they're working on themselves, right? They're sharpening their you know, their tools. They're getting a vision for the city that we're getting excited about. And, and that's kind of cool to think about. Yeah, great, great. Um, I, I don't have any other uh, specific questions. John, did, did you have any other follow up questions that, that you wanted to ask? Um, not not from a follow up perspective. I just uh, did have a question for you. Is there anything that you'd like to share with with our audience uh, about relevant programs or services yeah. or upcoming events that uh, you're involved with in yeah. any of your capacities? No, no, no. Um... None of those events or things like that. I, I did want to say this, as it pertains to, you know, diversity, equity, inclusion, and where we are in this moment of history in our company, our, our country. Um, I think every leader and organizations are looking internal, like, wow, okay, what am I going to do about that, right? What am I going to do um, in my own company, in my organization? And I just want to to be very clear that there have been several CEOs and folks trying to figure out what to do in Denver. What am I going to do? And it places MSU and, you know, other university or, or other places like that that are, you know, it's our number one diverse institution in the state. Um, it places them on a pedestal to say, OK, you want to know what to do? This is your future workforce, right? Oh, and by the way, there's 20,000 students there, right? Half of color, right? And so it's like, that's a great opportunity. And I think to all the folks who are wanting to do something, they need a little encouragement. Last year, during a pandemic, we hired more folks of color in our company than we did anything else, right? And so that came from intentionality, in recruiting. It came from having the conversation. We're going through a three year process in our company of really trying to understand what it means to look, re look at our policies, set a strategic plan, make sure all our work teams are focused on this work. And we're just beginning, 
And so, you know, companies, they, everybody cracks me up. Like this is supposed to be the hardest issue. It's not just focus on it, right? Whatever you measure gets done. And, um, I, I just think when folks start focusing on this work, they're going to see transformation. Don't get overwhelmed by trying to change the world. Change your workplace. Let's start there. Change yourself, right? And so that's uh, that's what we're focused on. That's uh, fantastic. Um, any other closing remarks? Um, no, this, I would just appreciate you guys doing this. This is great. Um, I hope uh, it, it leads itself to kind of just more more work and more transfer, transformation. And then folks who need the work the most, right? Like, you know, Derek, you talked about the individual, the individual who's struggling and like maybe they're in this dead end job that's that's only that's that's paying them, you know, minimum wages and they need a little skill development um, to build wealth so they can do that next career. Um, I hope that helps that person. Perfect. Thank you so much. This has been very, very informative, and I hope our listeners out there will enjoy it as much as I have. So so thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Yes, thank you. Thank you for being with us today, Elvis. Thank you, guys. Bye.